On the Doc Wiki, there's setup instructions for doing your development for both Windows and VCL, or Windows FireMonkey, as well as the multi-device development of Windows, Mac, OS X, iOS, and Android. We'll take a look at the ID and the setup for Windows. And by default, Win32 is already supported in the ID and has for years. So let's take a look at 64-bit Windows application development. There's a couple things we need to take a look at. Number one, if you're running on a 32-bit Windows system and you want to do 64-bit development, then you'll need to use uh, remote development to point to a target platform that's a 64-bit Windows. If you're running 64-bit Windows like I am, then we just need to make sure that we've configured the ID for 64-bit Windows application. And there's information here about configuring a 64-bit Windows application in the IDE. We'll need to set up a connection profile if we're on a 32-bit Windows system so that we can talk to a 64-bit Windows application. If we have a 64-bit system already, then we're already set up. We can run the 32-bit IDE and build and debug and deploy 32-bit and 64-bit Windows applications. So let's go to the IDE and say File New. Let's choose a VCL form application. We can go over in the project window and by default it gives us a 32-bit Windows target platform. The VCL and FireMonkey also support 64-bit Windows. So we can right mouse click and say Add Platform and have the choice 64-bit. Now we have two targets under our project. 32-bit Windows and 64-bit Windows. And again, since I'm running on a Win64 machine, I can develop in the 32-bit IDE and run 32-bit and 64-bit applications. If you're on a 64-bit Windows, there's nothing else to configure other than to build applications and, and run them, whether they're VCL or FireMonkey applications. 32-bit application, compile link, it's there. 64-bit application on Windows, compile and link, and it's there. Let's pretend we've installed the ID on a 32-bit version of Windows, but we still want to do 64-bit development. So we need a way for the Windows IDE running on 32-bit Windows to target a 64-bit Windows machine to put the application over there to be able to debug and test it and deploy it. We could also use the IDE as a remote debugging system to target 32-bit Windows and 64-bit Windows remote machines, for example, servers. And we use the Platform Assistant Server, or PA Server, for that. So in the Install folder for XE8, there's a PA Server folder. And in the PA Server folder, there's our Windows install for the Platform Assistant Server. There's also the Macintosh version of the PA server installed. We'll get to that in the video for configuring your IDE for Macintosh OS X and iOS development. So let's go and install the PA server. Now we can choose where we want our platform server to be installed. I've got a tools folder, so I will choose that place. The other way is that I could click restore default folder. But again, I want to put this in my Tools folder instead of my Program Files area. You could also click the Choose button and navigate to wherever you want to install the PA server. It tells us where it's going to be placed, and we'll click the Install button. And now over on my hard drive in my Tools folder, I've got the PA server, and here's the executable. So we can start that up. You can choose uh, to have a password for our connection profile. I'll just hit Enter the Windows firewall will pop up uh, and we'll give access to that executable. I can hit the question mark. That'll give me all of the command list that's available. I'll get the IP address, for example, of my remote Win64 machine. I'll use that IP address and put it to the clipboard. We can also look at the scratch directory where that is. It's under our PA server area. We can look at the port number, which defaults to 64211. So our PE server is running on a 64-bit Windows machine. We'll go back to the IDE, say Tools, Options, go to the Connection Profile Manager, click the Add button. We, want, we have our choice of a 32-bit Windows remote target, a 64-bit Windows remote target, and OS X. So my uh, target is 64-bit.
for my remote. You only need this if your ID is running on a 32-bit Windows machine, but you still want to do 64-bit Windows development. If you've got a 64-bit Windows machine, the Windows ID runs, and you have the target platform already on the system. So let's give this uh, Win64 PA target, give it a name, put that IP address of our remote machine. We can test to make sure it can talk to the port and the IP address. So everything is good, and we're done. Now if we say File New, uh, VCL or multi-device application, C++ or Delphi, we can go under the target platform by default 32-bit Windows, add 64-bit Windows target, right mouse click in the project manager on the 64-bit target, choose Properties, and it'll ask us for the profile of our target system. We can either add a new one or I could choose one that already exists. And now I've got my target for my 64-bit application. I can, again, make sure that it's okay and working. And I can go and run the application. It'll compile, link it, and deploy it so that it's running on the application underneath the covers. And here's my application running on my 64-bit Windows remote target via the PA server. If you're running the IDE on 64-bit Windows, then you have full support for 32-bit and 64-bit VCL and FireMonkey development, debugging, testing on the existing machine. But if you want to target and do testing on remote machines, you can put the PA server for 32-bit or 64-bit Windows on those targets and set up a connection profile to those remote machines in the IDE. During the install, you were given an option to join our customer experience program. If during the install, you uncheck that option, you can always turn it back on by going to the tools, options, customer experience program, and you can turn that on. Another tool that will help you make sure that your Windows IDE is configured properly is a migration tool that will take settings from previous versions of Rad Studio and import those settings into XE8. You'll find it in the program files in Barcadero Studio bin folder. The tool is called migrationtool.exe. So you can double click on it and it will let you export settings to a migration file from an existing Red Studio installation, migrate settings to a newer product version, or restore settings from a backup, import settings from a migration file. So the first option is to export settings to a migration file. Make sure the radio button is set, click next, and you'll see that it goes out to the registry and it looks for previous installations and registry settings. So for example, if I wanted to take my Rad Studio XE7 settings and export that, I can choose the settings I want to export. And you can either select all, deselect all, or choose the options you want to export. And then give it a migration name and a place to put it. I'll put it in my temp folder. And this is my XE7 settings and then finish and it created it. So over in my temp folder, I've now got my XE settings, uh, IDE settings file. The second option is to migrate settings to a newer product version. We'll choose that one, click next. So again, I can choose the export, choose some options, and then choose the product version I wanna import it to. If you've made editor customizations, uh, different IDE options, you can use this to migrate from a previous version to save you time. Nice little utility. This other option is import settings from a migration file. So if you've created a migration file, you can go and load that and bring it into your IDE. That's how easy it is to set up your development environment for 32-bit and 64-bit Windows.